All right, my apologies, I am back. <laughs> the doorbell rang, I had to go see who was here. All right, <clears throat> so we've got, uh, one of the objectives is to fill in this table so that we can respond to these limit questions right here. All right, so we've rewritten this function, this trigonometric function, so the calculator accepts it. So let's predict what we think the answer to these limit questions are first, and then we're gonna look at um, filling in these table of values to determine if we feel like what we were thinking is correct. I'm gonna create a fraction. I'm gonna put one on top, and in the denominator, we've got the six times the sine of pi x. Okay, that entry looks good. I am gonna, actually, I'm gonna to go to my mode. I wanna make sure that I'm in um, a radian mode, not degree. I wanna make sure that's all good. And then I'm actually gonna to go to zoom, and I'm gonna go down to the trig window. Not zoom six, I'm gonna to go to zoom seven. That trig window is, is kind of nice. If I like it, I'll keep it. If not, I'm going to adjust it. Whoa! It appears we have a bunch of vertical asymptotes. You're probably familiar with this uh, from the secant and cosecant graphs back in pre-cal. It appears we have a bunch of vertical asymptotes. I am interested in behavior near neg x equals negative 3, so maybe somewhere over here. I'm going to go to my window. I, that's too crowded for me. My x min, I'm actually just gonna change my x min to negative four. And then my x max, I might just go to two because neg x equals negative three falls in between there. And I think I'm gonna let the scaling just be by one so I can kind of count on the x axis. Uh, the y's are probably okay. Let's see what this view looks like. Yep, those upward and downward opening parabolas. Sometimes the calculator will kind of stop short. It struggles to draw the rest of the graph here. But we just have to know by the pattern that there's likely another vertical asymptote right here. All right, so we're interested in the limit as x approaches negative 3. So I remember I changed my window. So this is negative 1 and this is negative 2. And it looks like this must be x equals negative 3 right here. Looks like there's a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 3. I think the limit's not going to exist because of that infinite discontinuity. All right, so let me see. Let me hit trace, let me hit negative three, and let's see what the y value is. There's not one. So this graph suggests just because of the behavior that we have an infinite discontinuity. Like the previous one suggested, I didn't see a vertical asymptote kind of uh, situation. In example one, the graph looked like it was continuing except for at that point discontinuity. Okay, so Let's, um, let's, let's kind of imagine that, predict that our answer um, uh, of the limit as x approaches negative three from the left. So here's x equals negative three. If I'm to the left of it, that means that I'm on this, this portion of the graph. And as I want to get closer to x values of negative three, I'm gonna predict that my left-hand limit's going to positive infinity. What if you approach negative three from the right? So here's negative three to the right is over here. If I get on the graph, but start moving, because remember approaching means you gotta keep moving. Functional value means you keep your feet planted at that x value. Well, it looks like I'm going to negative infinity. I'm just gonna kind of lightly write this, this in. So what would that tell us then about the limit as x approaches negative three? Well, the answer would have to be d does not exist. I'm just kind of imagining. And then I'm gonna put because the limit as x approaches negative three. Instead of rewriting that function, I do need a label here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put f of x instead of the exact equation. The reason this limit is does not exist is because I approach a positive and a negative infinity from both sides, from either side. So that's my prediction. Okay, so, but what's, what's that gonna look like in table format? Okay, so looking in table format, we have to fill this table in. What, what do those numbers look like that suggest that these would be the answers that I recorded? Well, let's just kind of observe our table, kind of orient yourself to the table. All right, so look at the row of x values. This is negative 3.1, negative 3.01, et cetera, et cetera. I'm actually approaching negative three from the left of negative three. Now right here, I have to kind of think about going to the end of the x values in that top row. If I'm at negative 2.9 on a number line and then negative 2.99, et cetera, and so on, 
Okay, from this direction, I'm approaching negative 3 from the right side. So think about what these y values are and the trend as these y values move to the right and what the trend of these y values are as they move to the left, and that's going to give you what you need to report the answers down here. So I've got a graph, and so let's just plug things in, or you can go to your table and set it to ask and enter the, the values you want. I think it's just as easy to hit trace and hit negative 3.1. So it looks like I'm up at 0.53934. Okay, now negative 3.01. Okay, now look, my number went from a half, 0.5, to 5.30603. And that's truncated. I could have rounded that up to four. And I can't even see that point anymore on the screen because my y max was only set to 4, I think. All right, what happens when your x value gets closer to negative 3 yet? So add another 0. Now I'm way up here at 53. I don't think these numbers are leveling off to one specific number. And that's a 3. And let's do one more. I think three zeros. Oh, now I'm at 530. Just imagine if you were to get closer to x equals negative 3 yet by adding another 0. Now I'm at 5,000. And it's just going to get bigger. 53,000 would be the next number, probably 530,000. When I look at a half, jumps to 5, jumps to 53, jumps to 530, these numbers are increasing to positive infinity without bound. That supports what I saw on my graph getting higher and higher. And let's go ahead and fill in over here. Let's start from the far end of the table. I'm close to negative, oops, got to be on the graph, and trace. Now this y value, I can see it, it's right here. I want to see the next y value, so I'm going to go to my window, actually, and I'm going to reset my y to negative 10 to 10. I'll wait for it to finish graphing. It's just kind of harder to see the idea of the asymptotes there. Okay, let's hit trace, negative 2.99. So notice that I'm going further down, and even the next time I plug in an x value closer to negative 3, it's going to be even further down here. The bad thing about using trace is that sometimes it won't give you five decimals and I'm limited to what they give me. If you go to the table, you'll be able to get more than just these four decimals. It's just run out of room on this display to give us more decimals, and that's fine. Okay, so if you were presented with this table, we have to be able to answer these uh, questions without even looking at a graph. So I would just observe that these x values are getting closer to negative 3 from the right, and I'm looking at these y values going, they're just getting bigger and bigger and bigger, actually smaller and smaller and smaller. So I would put negative infinity. And now that I have information about the, the two-sided limits here, I can respond to D and E, and I can put the because down. So sometimes students struggle with interpreting tables, and so I thought I'd take us kind of through a full little tour of what that would look like. So you've got three more to finish here. Okay. All right, and something else I want to say, because as part of this assignment, you do have a book page to complete, and some of those problems involve filling in tables. You're actually going to be asked to do problems two, four, and six. And I can tell you two is easy, but be careful with four and the entry into the calculator. A lot of students don't see this um, expression as one over x plus one. You've got that fraction template on your calculator, so why not just build a double fraction? Okay, So that's how I would enter it now that we have that kind of pretty print um, ability in our graphing calculator. And the, probably the biggest mistake students make is on number six. If you look at number six, 
what happens is when you enter cosine, immediately the calculator opens up a parenthesis here. Don't put in minus one, you need to close the parenthesis after the x because the minus one is not in parentheses with the x. So hopefully that'll help you get started with those and avoid some of those common mistakes I've seen in the past.